Hi, I'm Carolyn Armbruster, and I manage educator programs and tours at the Crow Collection of Asian Art in downtown Dallas, Texas. I'm Ann Kinseth, and I manage school programs at the Crow Collection. And I'm Brittany Taylor. I'm the 2016-2017 Onsted Institute Crow Collection Fellow in Museum Education. We had a few main goals when developing this pilot program. Because the Crow Collection is working on equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives, and because the country is so divided right now, two important goals were to reach out into rural communities and to promote cultural understanding. And because middle school is an important time in determining whether a student will complete high school or not, we knew we wanted to do our part to serve that audience. We did multiple test runs before the pilot itself. The end result was that we piloted Crow 360 with nine middle school classes in a public school district about an hour from downtown Dallas. But we didn't just send a kit into the classroom. We also sent a museum educator to facilitate a discussion about a work of art and its original context using our participatory museum pedagogy. The selection of the object connects back to our goal of cultural understanding. We focused the lesson on a Mughal Indian architectural piece that was influenced by both Indian and Islamic art. We felt that it was important to teach about a work of art with Islamic roots during a time in the United States when fear of the Islamic religion and fear of people from other cultures are increasingly visible. We wanted to use the facade to help build a bridge. In the classroom, we explore this piece in a large group with a still image then in small groups with multiple 360 images. We would like to take the next few minutes to share our greatest learning curve in the creation of this program, the technology involved. Here are five tips we hope help those of you wanting to pilot similar programs. The use of 360 photos instead of 360 videos is more suitable for classrooms. We shot video first, but because of slow Wi-Fi, the video is blurry. We recommend taking 360 photos with a camera that stitches automatically. Use viewers with an adjustable focus so each student will be able to see the images clearly. We tried Google Cardboards first that don't have an adjustable focus and it did not work. Google Street View is a great resource. It has lots of high quality 360 images already uploaded and you can easily create your own 360 images with the app. This is what we used after the video was too blurry. The image quality is lower than it would be if shot on a 360 camera, but if you don't have the budget to buy the right camera, this is an accessible alternative. And a note, to experience the image as 360 in the viewers, load the street view image, click the cardboard icon, then turn your phone horizontally before inserting it into the 360 viewer. If you purchase a classroom set and download the Google Street View and Google Cardboard apps, configure each phone using Google Cardboard so it will not freeze, and if you take Google Maps off the phones, students will be able to access the 360 photos more efficiently. Another important reason to purchase a classroom set is to make sure that all students can participate fully regardless whether or not they own a smartphone. During the pilot, we solved this by supplementing students' phones with laptops and having students work in teams, but in the future, we would purchase a class set. And finally, make sure the school district provides access to Wi-Fi and the websites you need. We hope that learning from the Crow 360 pilot will inspire you to design your own 360 program and help you avoid some of the technical difficulties we had. We'd love to hear from those of you who try it out. Feel free to email us at education at crowcollection.org.